пересказывает. Can you retell the words, not to read them from the list, but list, but read it in your mind and then say it, not looking at them. Looking at them. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Retell. Retell. Security. Security. Вот, сложнее уже, ага. Guitar. Guitar. P position. Position. The name. The name. Mm -hmm. Michelle. Michelle. Uh, there's a town by me town called Nesconset. Nesconset. Uh, I always uh, wanted to I visit. Wanted to visit Sedona, Arizona. Arizona. Detroit. Detroit. Is a city in, a city in Michigan. Michigan. Uh, the word. The word. Communication. Communication. Uh, uh, delivery. Delivery. Electrician. Electrician. <laughs> um, well, the overall problem is since I was 18, I started having speech problems, uh, more with anxiety, nervousness. Yeah. Uh, it started in school. And uh, it was just for reading at first, and then it started with phone calls and then talking with people. And I'm known to be a pretty talkative person, but other times I get, I get very nervous, very blocked on words. I tend to have problems with maybe words that start quickly, um, words that have a first syllable that's quick. It's not only that, but that's one of the main ones that's always in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also with different situations, um, sometimes make me nervous and certain people, I guess I can be relaxed with my friends, but I will avoid words a lot. Uh, I'm sure Alex probably might know about that as well. Um, and some, some therapists, uh, they call it closet stutters, where they're kind of hiding their stutter, if that makes sense. And that's probably what I am, usually. Брайан, расскажите о вашем вчерашнем походе. С кем общались? С психологом, да? И как все прошло с вашей точки зрения? Meeting with your therapist, how do you think in speaking about your speech? How was it? Um, I thought it was okay. I'm usually pretty relaxed, except the certain words that I either have to hesitate on or mm -hmm. smooth out that first um, syllable. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe 80%. Perhaps. <laughs> I heard that it was maybe 90, but probably you know that about your speech. I, I think I say a lot of uh, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I've noticed that, but I guess I'm also thinking of what to say. Especially well, you are speaking a lot, so. Yeah, I know it was a long um, file. I think it was. Well, 50 minutes. I don't know if you listened to the whole thing, but... <laughs> uh, 
I listened to the call. That was fine. Just, just because we has uh, the reason, <laughs> of course. Mm. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Um, it seems like uh, is he planning on writing a book? Alexander, you plan to write a book? Попозже. Later, maybe a, a little one. Good, yeah, because it seems like he wrote it very thoroughly, as if it would be a chapter in a book, especially mm -hmm. those last pages that had a lot of the thorough information. Mm -hmm. Have you had uh, more conversations, except your therapist and father? Um, a few quick ones. I had to go to the clothing store. Um, so, of course, I spoke uh, with the customer service um, lady there uh, for about six or seven minutes. Uh, and I'm usually pretty friendly when I'm out. I can try and be, as you know, maybe a little talkative, a little friendly when I'm at a store or something. Of course, it depends on the day. Sometimes I might feel a little anxious on certain days. Um, but if I'm at the at the market, I've had a little bit more of a, a feeling lately of being a little more relaxed when I can just be friendly to a stranger. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I notice when I'm doing that, I'm not thinking as much. So it's a little bit more of a natural friendliness where you're not think you're not your brain is not getting in the way, or my brain isn't getting in the way as much. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. If you had such moments, did you go the new way? Or there was some times when you did the yeah. usual one? Uh, there was uh, definitely some times, especially speaking with my father briefly mm -hmm. for a couple of minutes. Um, actually a little longer than that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I would repeat the first syllable. Um, so instead of just saying supply, I would mm -hmm. say su 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 supply. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to um, just ease it. Supply, supply. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to just think of that su or su, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, on the ringtone. First months after uh, taking the course at Snishko, Alexander has about uh, two or three hundred of such um, moments of the pre stupor situation when you have this small fear just for a second before speaking, but as he also had the information how to do it right, the well, the plan in his head, and that helped him to get over it, to continue to later, to have a, a speech that he desired. Yes, I could see um, it's it's a tool. So I think mm -hmm. I feel have that knowledge, of course, and I'm right. uh, learning yes. what to focus on. Um, have a better understanding in this next week of just doing it every day, and I, I definitely will try or, or definitely do that thousand words just to get it in there. Okay. <clears throat> so you asked, uh, how well, how was I feeling today? Yes. Um, this morning, I had a cup of coffee, and I started feeling a little anxious the first half hour that we started this conversation. Um, now I feel a little bit better. So mm -hmm. I eventually was going to ask Alex if he feels that I should avoid coffee <laughs> because I don't know if it makes you more more anxious uh, or not. I uh, think, but, well, coffee is usually half and half. Some people say that it has a lot of advantages even for the health. But mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the type of the coffee and the amount, well, how much you drink. Because mm -hmm. Americans have cups like this, uh, but uh, it should be only like... Yeah, I just, yeah, I had just a small little 
Well, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, it wasn't well, that bad. Probably you should pay attention to your feelings after you have this cup. Yes. So what do you feel? Yes. It, it helps me wake up mm -hmm. and um, I woke up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. so helped me get a little energy for our long session. Um, but now I feel um, better. I don't feel anxious uh, or, or um, uh, riled up with too much energy. I feel better now. So the coffee may have worn off. Maybe. Uh, yes. Maybe, yes. I heard that coffee doesn't give us energy. It just takes more from us. But then it comes down without the energy that we gave, like in advance, you know. Yeah, sometimes people call that a crash. You might be up here and then you'll just crash. It's like you have no with, with the sugar, right? Exactly. Yes. I was so, a little overwhelmed this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I guess because of last night trying to understand this. Maybe I was a little frustrated at times, but I understand this is new. Mm -hmm. uh, I get, I'm used to trying to learn everything quick. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that. Well, he looks like a very calm, not very calm person, but a, yeah. not a person who wants to get in a fight. Exactly. Just yeah, he, he doesn't look like a confrontational person. Right. That's, yeah, that's probably uh, a good word. Yeah. Alexander, would you miss him? You put ready был вопрос от Брайана. Нет. Нет, вы не тот человек, который будет, как называется, человек. Не всегда Брэк. зависит от многих ситуаций. Uh -huh. It depends on the situation, says Alexander. Uh-huh, yeah. So. I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm a pretty normal, uh, calm person, but then if something happens, I, I can go right up to here <laughs> and, and get angry. Uh, right. But I don't. I, I never am aggressive with people, unless they're aggressive with me. But that's rare. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can choose yourself what to tell about, or I can ask you either way. Just um. Well, did you say you wanted me to read something, or no, you, no, no, to say to speak about something? Okay. Um. Well, there I go again with the um. <laughs> uh, if you feel like uh, maybe asking me something, do you have any other questions listed? I do have a lot. Well, they are all very interesting. Or you can say maybe more like... Well, More uh, like real, real life or situations describing something. Mm -hmm. um, well, the one thing I was going to say is mm -hmm. sometimes I'm frustrated with the way of life, um, either the way I've been living or just in my country. So sometimes I wanted to experience other countries or other cultures, especially like we've talked that other countries can sometimes be very happy people and yeah. they have a different way of life. Mm -hmm. So I actually wanted to either travel or move to another country for a short time, but I never had any uh, way of doing that because I wasn't in school. So I didn't have like a, maybe like a foreign exchange program, I think they usually call it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you mentioned you did, I thought that was interesting. It must have been a great opportunity oh, to yes, do it was. that. Yeah. Uh, was it was it scary at first, making such a big jump? A little bit, but I was too young, so <laughs> I don't. Maybe I didn't even realize how big it is. Only now I can realize that. Well, I went to another country over the ocean when I was nineteen, and I was alone. But of course, there were more Russian people. For now. It's just an amazing experience, and back then it was, I didn't realize it. Yeah, sometimes uh, I know I've been 
in the past, I had a lot of issues in um, high school mm-hmm. at the end of my, my, my schooling. Uh, some of it was because of my speech. That's when things began. And um, it was very stressful. And I was young at the time, too, where I couldn't uh, process everything. Or sometimes I just I just rolled with it. You know, I just uh, accepted the stress or the frustration and just didn't know what to do. And I was young. So I said, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do or or I gave up after a while um, with everything because you didn't know what to do anymore. You felt stuck. Um, And even over the years, as I've gotten older, sometimes I have been positive about things then. Uh, giving up about things and the speech sometimes wasn't a focus of the problem and other times it's it's always there it's always in the back of the mind mm-hmm. um, and it's something I've always tried to address on my own or I thought it would just pass on its own it wouldn't be there anymore um, maybe when you get more confident as you get older uh, but that ha- I've heard of people saying that when they were younger, they had a speech problem or they stuttered and then they outgrew it as they grew up. They didn't have it. Uh, with me, it was the opposite. I never grew up with it. And for, I guess, a stressful situation, it happened in high school. And it's been an issue for about, uh, about 20 years. And I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. I should have, I think I know now that when I was younger at the time, I should have addressed it. I should have admitted that I didn't feel comfortable um, or I didn't feel comfortable expressing myself. Um, so uh, right now speaking, I feel okay, a little calmer and we're having just a simple uh, calm conversation. Of course, as we've established in public, you have so much senses coming in, um, the hearing and, and, and just the way that you feel certain things might make you nervous, well, might make me nervous. Um, so everyone, uh, and everyone can become nervous. It's fine. Yeah. It just seems like other people or normal people, like they say, um, they can get nervous, but it doesn't somehow affect their speech apparatus. Uh, whereas with me or with other stutterers, somehow if they get nervous or anxious, it goes right to the speech apparatus Mm -hmm. or it goes right to their mind and then comes out of the speech apparatus. So I understand uh, a lot of things. It's just Sometimes over the years, you uh, you try and you read and you learn, and then nothing seems to uh, work. Uh, so that was sometimes. I know people that had a lot of problems, but they never did anything about them, except for doing drugs <laughs> uh, to make themselves feel better. I never did that. I always wanted to learn and, and read why I feel like this. I wanted to get to the root of it. And uh, the speech, I think, is the big root of a lot of it. And to finally have a thoroughness that we've had this last couple of days, and even the last few months that I've learned a lot from the website, Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's actually a pretty good step of getting to the root of things and not wasting any more time. Great. the two other there have you ever heard of a speech therapist in new york um martin schwartz martin schwartz uh martin and schwartz s c h w a r t z (laughs) um he wrote a lot of books Mm -hmm. ones that i think started the airflow technique oh Uh, you know when you're supposed to blow out yes and ease into a word and i went to him once but it wasn't helpful and it was a lot of money and then years later how much 
Sorry. Uh, it was one day. It was 3,000. Mm -hmm. For one. 3,000 for, for one session with a group of other uh, students. 3,000, right? 3,000. No, $3,000 for, for one, one session. session with a group of about 10 stutterers. Wow, and how old? Yeah. Um, that was all day. And mm -hmm. then they had follow-up things where I was supposed to record myself, mm -hmm. try to use his technique. And then I was supposed to mail to him yeah. in the mail the uh, ca cassette. I was supposed to mail that, and then one of his students would uh, analyze it. And then, you know, that was a little bit before we had all the cell phones. That mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. that, you know when that was? That was when 9-11 happened. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it was about two weeks after that happened. Awesome. So that was when I uh, saw him. And it wasn't a great experience, and I got frustrated. And then I called him about a month later asking for a little more advice or a little more training. And he said that I would have to pay him more money. And I said, I don't feel that. As right. usual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As usual. Uh, like, he didn't seem helpful. He didn't. And he was never a stutter in the first place. He was just a doctor. Um, and then years later, I went to one other a very nice woman. And she... Uh, taught the typical, I guess, stuttering techniques um, about easing into things, but was never as thorough as this, actually teaching the steps and the soaring yes. tone and the ringtones. But she was very nice, and I was able to uh, talk with her thoroughly. She was also maybe like a personal therapist, not mm -hmm. just for speech. Um, just like I'm talking with you now, just openly about things and the way you feel. So she mm -hmm. was uh, helpful in that way too. But it wasn't just about speech um, either, even though she taught some therapy as well. Mm -hmm. too. But it That's didn't really seem very interesting. Uh, this is how you spell his last name. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, first like Dutch? Uh, yeah, maybe uh, Jewish. It's like a Jewish last name. It was a group of maybe 10 or 12 other students, so it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one session. So mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't really like that. Um, I felt no. you get it less. Work. It doesn't work, I don't think, yes, because there were some um, other students there that were very severe stutterers. Mm -hmm. That was a tough word I just said. Severe. Yes, I, I noticed that yeah, you just slowed it down, but you said it. Said it okay. Yes. But um, you can do better, right? Uh, yes, exactly. Good. And you know what? He, he sent us home after the uh, class with a rubber tube, mm -hmm. a, rubber, a rubber hose that we were supposed to put in our mouth and practice on blowing the air out so that it was easy. Very stupid. Very strange. <laughs> very strange, very stupid. Rubber, like what is this? rubber? Uh, a, a rubber, um, a rubber tube um, about this long. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. You, have you, uh, do you know when you give blood at a hospital? Mm -hmm. and have to tie maybe a tube around you so they can see your veins. Mm -hmm. They ever do that? Yes. Uh, okay, it was that same tube. It was like a rubber tube like that, and we had to blow through it and with our other hand mm -hmm. feel the airflow. And if it was too little or too much airflow, we weren't doing it correctly. <laughs> and it just it didn't feel natural. I didn't, I didn't stay with it. It did not feel natural. I tried it for about two weeks after the class and it didn't feel natural. I said, I don't have a problem breathing. Why do I have to practice on my breathing? <laughs> <laughs>